Hey guys, what is up? I hope everybody has been having a great day. I'd like all up to welcome you all to the quarterfinals of the second tournament in the Rockwall Long Drive Series, hosted at the One Stop Power Shop and put on by the Professional Long Drivers Association. Please do me a favor and hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, if you like more long drive content like this in the future. And with that being said, let's hop into it. So this is the quarterfinal match number one. And it is myself facing Brandon Flynn, who is a newcomer in the sport of long drive. And he's very, very talented. Anytime you have someone right out of the gate who's in the low 140s, it's incredibly rare. In fact, in the time since I've been in the sport in 2017, I can probably count on one hand the amount of guys who have started right away in the low 140s. So that's very impressive speed to have right out of the gate. It worked a little too far on the inside on that one there and blooded out a bit to the right and a couple yards out of bounds. And Brandon does the same thing here as well. And this was a tough day for a lot of the competitors. There were a lot of OB sets. The wind, out, the wind down by the grid was moving pretty hard left to right, but where we were hitting from, we weren't feeling too much of it. So, and it was swirling a little bit as well. So you did have to guess a lot. And that was definitely a tough thing to contend with all day. So you can see here, getting a little more gas on it now at 149 and a half club speed. Pulled this one a bit left, but landed very softly in the grid. So I caught a piece of that. And so I was first one on the board with 366 yards. Brandon's shot drifts off a little bit to the right. And also, um, you know, I, I know a lot of people are probably wondering what kind of has happened to the long drive tour we had last year on TV in the wake of the coronavirus. And, um, well, I guess just the state of things going on in, this, in the um, world right now. And basically, it's kind of really put the sport in a tough spot just with, you know, everything changing and, you know, things being really top two turvy this year. So... This is kind of going for my vision for the sport, and I think a lot of the guys here are on board with it. Where we're gonna, we're looking at going on YouTube and you know bringing as many events as we can to you guys out there. I I know a lot of you guys like to watch long drive content, and so this is kind of our way of doing it. And I think it'll be something that will really be a lot of fun to show you guys. It's it's definitely a lot of fun to compete again. It's been a long time. And um, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to a lot more events like these in the future. And so now getting a little bit later into the set here. And Brandon's still struggling with a bit of a right and miss here. And you can see he's, he knows he's coming out of it a little bit. And one of the things that is very tough about redu going, because last year we, had, we were hitting eight balls in a set, and now we're down to six. And I think one of the toughest things about that is being able to be comfortable even when you've missed the first couple balls and you don't have a ball in play to not start panicking that's one of the hardest things in the sport to do and it's probably one of the biggest differentiators between those guys who are able to win and those guys who who don't because you need to hit those shots you're going to have a, you're going to have situations where you're down to one or two shots and you, and you need to step up and so Brandon's in that situation right now and we'll see if he can pull it off this is a great ball by Brandon here. You can see the carry. That definitely probably had enough to get past me. And, you know, the wind, again, just pushed a little bit out to the right. And I think just landed in bounds and kind of rolled off the grid. So he ended up having a tough set there. And so I was fortunate enough to advance into the semifinals. But very talented player. And you'll see a lot more of him in the future. And now in our second match, two veterans in the sport, Landon Gentry versus Ryan Riesbeck. Um, two of really good friends and also teammates from the one-stop power shot. And look for Landon to be the most consistent guy by far, or at least one of the most consistent guys in this sport in general. Hits the center of the face probably just as good as anyone, if not better. And flights are great. He's been in the sport for over 10 years now, so you know he's got a lot of experience and he's seen it all. And he's always a tough guy to compete against because he's not really, you know he's not afraid of anything. And same thing for Riesbeck. Riesbeck's been in the sport for, I think, over 10 years now, or at least close to that. And still one of the fastest in the world. He's been the fastest, one of the fastest for probably over 10 years now. So it's pretty amazing to have that speed for that long. 
And he gets started off with a really nice drive here. Nice little turnover draw down the center. And that definitely makes it a lot easier in future, future shots in this set. So now Landon, looking to answer. And he comes over the top a little bit. A little bit of an overcorrection there. And, but I really, Landon's got a great swing, great action, and he's grooved it for a very long time. And so you all, you all, he, and he rarely hits OB sets. It's, I, I, I mean, I don't, I'm sure I've got far more OB sets than he does, even though I've been in the sport like only a third of the time he has. So he's back now, trying to add to his lead. Pulls it a little bit, but still not a bad shot. But and that's you know, the reality about this sport is there's going to be a lot of OB shots. You know, when you move the club this fast, that's just going to happen. So what you're looking for is to have a quality miss, and you know if you can eliminate one side of the grid and start getting closer and closer, good things are about to happen. And so now Landon here trying to get on the board. <clears throat> it's a really good drive here, a high draw right back into the right center of the grid, and he takes the lead. So really great job by Landon there of answering, and now puts the pressure back onto Riesbeck. And, and Riesbeck's really, you know, he's just brute force. And this guy, <laughs> it's pretty impressive to watch him hit a golf ball. It's, it's pretty amazing. And uh, just gets a little bit over the, over the top there as well. And uh, turns that one over again. But you can tell he's missing in the same spot or roughly the same way. And that's a good thing, as I mentioned earlier in the sport. Because you want to have that consistent miss and then you can start slowly dialing it in to get better and better. And Landon now trying to add his lead and some pretty good speed on that and uh, turning it over into center. And only got, didn't get a very good roll out. And the grid wasn't doing too well on lower shots here. So even though he had some pretty good speed on that, one of the things I, for you, those of you watching, is to note that you know, sometimes it's important for distance to hit it high, sometimes it's important for distance to hit it low. And one of the biggest questions I always get is, you know, what's your longest drive? And my longest drive was hitting my first ever event, and people are confused by that. But what people don't realize is conditions matter so much when it comes to distance. And so being able to understand what makes golf ball go further, and more importantly, being able to understand what makes it go further in that particular day is, is critical to being a great long driver and honestly being able to hit the ball further in general just in a regular game of golf and that's what all these guys are always trying to be cognizant of and here another another shot kind of left the, left the door open a bit but he does turn this one over and notice as I said earlier Landon just so consistent filling up the grid and that's a great way to compete you know you don't have to be the fastest in the world if you're able to fill the grid up and get a lot of get the ball bouncing and rolling and you can start putting pressure on the speed and on the power player you know the tables turn fast and that's how a lot of guys are in the sport they just they just fill the grid up put pressure on you and watch you crumble sometimes I like that. and now Ryan with a monster ball here 218.3 ball speed is that's pretty fast and just left and you can see he's missed his last four and very tiny pocket on the left side of the grid and he's hitting so he's even though he hasn't had a ball in or, or hasn't had a ball in, in the last couple he's hitting it great and he knows he's just one good ball away from squaring one up and really taking this one home and now Landon's last ball and kind of mishits it does turn it over back into the grid but not going to challenge his 367 mark that he has up there. It's now Ryan with one last shot to to tie him or to beat him and and uh, keep his hopes of winning this tournament alive. You can see how consistent he is with this setup, just kind of going through his little routine here. And that's so important when you under when you have all this pressure on you is to do the same thing over and over, get you into a nice little rhythm. And he really let this one rip and. Put it in, he put it in the, you know, the grid, and uh, we were really waiting to see where this ball ended up because if it got rolling, it could have been pretty close, and unfortunately, didn't quite have the gas in the ground it needed, and so Landon Gentry will move into the semifinals, so we'll see more from him later. And now Will Hogue versus Rob Tietmeyer. 
two of the biggest names in the sport. And so Rob's up first. And very much like Landon, Rob's one of those guys who fills it up. He's got a very, very repeatable swing, very consistent. And I would say there's two types of players in the sport. There's the the brawlers and there's the golfers. And the brawlers, I would say what they do is they just have tons of speed. They don't always hit in the center of the face, but if they square one up, it's game over. And this, the golfers, or I guess you could say the swingers, are the ones that, they aren't the fastest in the world, but they're never going to hand you the set. They're never going to have an OB set. They're going to have a really solid number almost every time. And those are the guys that are scary because you just you know you're never going to have a break. And uh, Dietmar bleeds that one out a little bit to the right. But again, really great action, really consistent with his ball striking. So now on to the next shot for Hogue. He's currently got the lead at 346 yards. Yeah, probably. Uh, squeezes that one right a little bit too, but you can see his speeds are pretty solid here. Anytime you're over that 145 range, that's definitely what I would consider world-class speed. There's maybe at any given time 15, 10 to 15 guys that are over 145, maybe not even that. So it's, a, it's a pretty exclusive club. And obviously you're talking about even less when you uh, go close to 150. And so Tietmeyer with a great drive there and takes the lead at 363. So a little Pendulum swinging back into Rob's favor half, halfway through the set. Now the pressure on Hogue. And another really good drive here. Really great shot. Way to respond to the pressure here and ends up taking the lead right back. So a little um, back and forth action here. It's great to see two of the best hitters in the sport and going back and forth. It is very fun to watch. And now on to Rob's uh, fourth shot. Uh, Bleeds went out to the right a bit and uh, does find the right center, it looks like, but didn't get the roll he needed, so Hoke still got the, the mark at 379. And huge shot here, really covered it, covered it up nicely and matched his 379 ball, so got it back to 379 for the second time in his set. And for those of you wondering the way long drive works, it's your longest ball and that's all that matters, no matter how many times you fill it up. Whoever has the longest golf ball on the grid at the end is the one who moves on. And also, for those of you curious, we had multiple rounds before this of um, round of 24 and then the round of 16 to get to the final eight. So there were a lot of other competitors in this, so we're already pretty deep into the tournament. If you guys would like other highlights and, you know, I guess you could say earlier round stuff, let me know. I will have uh, a comment pinned in the comment section kind of elaborating on what I said earlier about the situation of the sport of long drive and kind of what we're trying to do. And just so you guys can understand what I what this is all about and um, what we want where we want to go in the future. Put a pretty good move on it, but it did bleed out to the right a bit and will unfortunately go out of bounds, so Hogue takes that one, so Hogue moving into the semifinals as well. And now on to our fourth and final match of the video, quarterfinal match number four against Josh Koch and Justin James, with James up first. These are two of the fastest cars in the game. I think there's probably, at the time this recording, there's probably about five people in the world who can move a golf club 150 miles an hour and these are two of them right here so this is going to be a very fun set to close out the video and these are two of the guys that have been hitting the longest balls of the tournament and josh koch actually won the first event of the um of the uh, rockwell long drive series so he's definitely a guy to look out for he's probably one of the most improved players in the last year or so and he's also one of those guys i mentioned earlier that in the time since I've joined the sport in 2017, he was one of those few guys that kind of immediately was in the low 140s. It's definitely a freakish amount of speed, and you can definitely train it and get up to these kinds of numbers if you start that high to begin with. I remember when I started my career, I was, I think I topped out at about 143, 144 in my first couple of weeks, and I've gained probably about 10 to 12 miles an hour of speed, and I've seen a very similar trait 
from people from their first long drive session to maybe two or three years later when they've fully gotten themselves trained, you're probably looking at typically about 10 to 12 miles an hour of speed gain on average for the typical person. At least that's what I've noticed. So now Josh Koch took the lead with a really great drive down the bus. And Justin James, definitely not leaving anything in the bag there. You can see his carry numbers are definitely, he's definitely hitting it far enough, but he's just having trouble turning it over. And that's definitely one of the hard things about being a really fast player in terms of club speed. You can definitely, you know you have the destiny, you control your own destiny when it comes to speed. However, the faster you swing it, the harder it is to hit in the grid. And that's kind of the double-edged sword. And the white whale of, lo of long drive, so to speak, is being the fastest guy in the world with the best ball flight. And if you're that guy, you're typically number one or very close to it. Because it's just so hard to have both. And you got Justin here again. Those carry numbers are flying right to where Josh's ball is, and just still just a little bit right. If you can square that up, it's going to be, it's going to be uh, definitely enough to take a pass, Josh here. And so now on to Josh's fourth ball, and uh, again just trying to keep building on his lead here. Another beautiful shot here, really great shot. Covers it up nicely, a little power fade down to left center, and 389 yards, so he definitely did what he needed, he needed to do with Justin carrying his in the mid-70s, which was to build on that lead and extend it. And Justin really letting this one go too, another really great shot. And carried 374, see if it gets enough rollout. This is definitely gonna be a close one here. And it came back at 393 yards, so he does take the lead. And that was a huge ball. Really great clutch shot by Justin there. So now Josh really needing to find something solid here and, and uh, see what he can do here. It kind of comes out of this one a little bit, and definitely is easy to do at these speeds when you're under pressure. I've <laughs> Trust me, I know all about doing that. Yeah, because the faster that club moves, the harder it is to let it release, and yeah, it can be pretty tough. Justin now trying to build on it and really wanted that one and you can tell he thought he had more than 393 on that and just slides off the grid on the right. And yep, he was definitely upset about that one. And now Josh, one last shot to try to answer and or else Justin will be moving on to the semifinals. You'll believe this one out to the right. And so stay tuned for the next video for the semis and the finals. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.